Hi everybody. Now somebody asked me, they said they had plenty of these things. What could I think of to make with them? So these are called silk cocoons. And that's where you get your silk from, that's where it originates. So I thought, well I've got a lot of silk things and I'll get some out and we'll do something. We'll make something pretty. These things here are called rods or carrier rods. They're silk as well. Um, yeah, so look at the rods. Aren't they fabulous? The luster in them is fantastic. And they will pull apart like these here. And it's just a fabulous fiber. So there's that. Now I wanted to look also at some of the other things that you can get. This is called Throaster's Waste Silk. Look at all of that. Beautiful. So there's all kinds of wonderful things in the world of silk. Um, and there's a thing called silk paper or silk fusion. And once long ago I did play with it and I made a few things. And here's here's one for example where you layer different um, silk fibres. And uh, I used a bit of net and a bit of lace and a bit of different things in there. It's quite light and delicate and it has that sheen from from that. There's the other side. I quite like that as well. But it makes uh, makes an interesting kind of thing. But they call that silk paper. Here's another one in blue. And can you see these bits here? That, that waste, that throaster's waste makes these delicious little curls. So I'm going to be using that as well. Here's one I made right at the beginning. It was way too thick, I think. But it was, you know, just a first experiment. But I think that we can do a lot better now. So I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to just start collecting a few bits and pieces to experiment with. Uh, I know in the past I've used scrim, a bit lighter than this, hand dyed, it's a lot of fun. And you know I use this in a lot of different things. This is linen, hand dyed, but I like like that we can make it lacy like that. I have it in several colours there. I'll just grab those scraps out. I've grabbed a scrap of this organza. I've grabbed a scrap of, of that metallic kind of net. And I've grabbed some plain net. And the plain net is used to pop down, put your fibres, that goes on top and you use your textile medium or whatever you want uh, that's uh, there's all different methods to sandwich it in between so I'm starting to collect my bits and uh, I might make a pinky pinky orange one and maybe even a greeny gold one we'll see how we go now a few more bits to play with is that you can easily trap things in the paper. You might have seen before where I had feathers and this here is a sari silk yarn. Really it's just threads but you can use that. See look at that. Pretty. So these are hand dyed. I hand dyed a whole bunch of woolen naps or nibs and these are just the little bits and bobs of um, of fibre that hadn't been, uh, you know, drawn out as, as roving. So that the little dag ends, shall we say. Sometimes it's, it's just little balls. And it's really nice. I'm hoping to try some of that in there. But you know me, I like to experiment. And look at that, that's beautiful. That's definitely going in. Hmm. Mulberry silk fibre. Yeah, you can get it like this and all kinds of colors are in there and see how I can just just tease out the, tease it out now you can also buy silk hankies they're called which is a very fine webbing like that um, in a square and they're very useful 
we will play with silk a few times I think and learn a little bit more about it so it's beauty and it's uses and here's one that's just a plain color you see so um, all different types here yeah, variegated look at them sumptuous now I might add in more things I don't know but uh, play as we go so I've just popped something waterproof here and I've chopped a piece of net that I thought was big enough to nearly cover it and I'm going to start by laying down some colour I, mean, I love this I'm going to use some of that can you see how it just pulls like that and it's very wispy beautiful and I'm just going to lay it down like that nice and delicate. I'm going to use a bit of this greeny. That's why these variegated ones are so lovely. There's so many colours in it. So there we go. Something like that. Put a little bit down there. So I'll put a little bit of that over here and we'll see how we go. Um, and I'm also going to look at what might I want. I might want... Hmm. Okay. Let's try that. Let's put a bit of this in. Let's see if it rips so I can get that kind of edge. Some things rip, some things don't. But that's okay. Just going to cut some bits. And that adds its own little bit of shine, doesn't it? I'll be very interested to see what this works out like. I'm hoping, hoping for good things. Look at that, beautiful. I'm going to let some of it show and just put a very fine bit over the top. What colour have we got here? Oh, that peachy colour. It's nice. I'm just going to cut some bits of that. I'll take the salvage off. But you might find some nice laces that you want to embed. I've done that. All kinds of things. See, I'm mixing this, teasing it apart so it's not all in one uh, solid lump. There, something like that. I think that would be good. I'll pop it there and I'll do another one over here and of course I don't know what it's going to turn out like it's going to be fun whatever way we do it'll be good I'm sure here we go here's another one and we can use those threads we can do that See? lovely it's just going to be an experiment and hopefully in the end we can do something with those little cocoons that we were going to use you know uh, there we go what else maybe some of these well, this was very very nice wasn't it some of these threads perhaps getting quite bright. Maybe we want something to make it a little bit more subtle again. What can we do? What else do we have? We got that. Ah, did I put any of that in? I did. No, I didn't. Okay. A little bit of this. So I'll just speed this bit up. You can see I'm laying down and trapping those uh, 
the other things in there in amongst that silk and here goes the nips or nibs I think that'll look real well I've never used it before in this kind of thing but uh, they'll be interesting and here are just some uh, strands of different threads and I'll finish up with a little bit of a little bit more of the silk fiber on top this is called many things there's uh, silk tassa silk uh, mulberry silk and uh, all different categories of how it is spun out right I think I'll stop and I've trapped some interesting threads and you know all different kinds of bits and pieces in there and I'm hoping it'll be interesting when we're finished but who knows so what I'm going to do is trap it like that back a little bit because I want I want those nice lacy edges I think just to see what they do okay now turn that over there whoops sticking to me there we go and I'm not going to take too much fuss over it but now I'm going to use a solution on there we'll do that next and then we'll dry it and come back So what I'm going to use in this, this one, and I don't think I've used textile medium before, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm just going to mix up a little bit of water and textile medium, half and half, and see how that goes. I know I've done it with uh, wallpaper paste and um, all different kinds of things before. I just want to see, I've read about this one. Let's just see. So I'm just going to use a whoops a brush to dab dab just to work it through and that's why I put the the plastic sheet down underneath because I'm just saturating it through It's been a while since I've played with it now. I, I think I just used PVA one time. Uh, like I said, wallpaper paste is another method. Might try Mod Podge. Um, there's all kinds of mediums and things that are glues. Oh, we'll turn it over this way. Make sure that it has gone completely through. Once we're convinced it's okay, I'm just going to then put it outside as it is. Hang it from the line with something underneath it in case it drips. Um, but, you know, this allows the air to get through from both sides so that it will dry and, uh, and stay in its sheet form. And uh, hopefully that will just peel off at the end. Uh, we'll, we'll take it now and put it outside to dry. Then we'll make another, just to be sure. So now we're going to try another one. Why not? We're going to make it a different colour range. As we did before, we'll pop down something. So many more things we could add in, but I am keen to see how it works. So I'm just going to stop there. I'm just going to turn it over and see. I've got through. Looks different on both sides, doesn't it? We put green on the bottom layer and we put a gold on the top so I'm hoping we can just turn it around and use both sides so 
So out on the line to dry. Um, so here it is. A little bit, a little bit drier at least. I think it might be a little bit damp, one of them. But see how it is quite easily pulling away. This is the net that we're removing now from both sides. Well, aren't they just delectable? This side's better because we've got a little bit of, of trapping, a little bit of the uh, silk over top of that, and that's quite nice. I like it. Anyway, what a lovely experiment. I've made it very, very delicate. I'm designing as I go. I've never tried this. And I don't know what we're going to get. But I think it's worth a go. Very, very pretty. I'm going to pop these in. So I'm going to grab one of these cocoons, and as you can see, they're really quite easy to cut. And I'm going to snip into it and cut these little triangles out and uh, sort of make a little serrated edge. Now I've grabbed a piece of wire and I'm just going to feed it through, through the ends of uh, each one of these leaves and just see what we can do with that. So I'm sort of uh, spreading them out so that they are round in a circle, heading in different directions from that central wire. Making a little hole in the bottom of the cocoon. Right, we've threaded all of those on the piece of wire. Now I think I'll just turn it over like that. And push them into that. If I didn't want to go, I'd just cut them down a bit further. There you go. There you are. And then we should be right. We have a little random silk flower. Now, I'm not convinced that that's the right way to do it but you know that was my experiment for today and uh, that's okay can you see all of those lovely colors pull it down into the little bud and it's even better there now Imagine if you made a few of those, it'd be quite pretty, wouldn't it? You could put one of these. Let's try that. I'll play and uh, let's finish it off and just we'll see what we end up with. We might improve it in the next in the next one, but uh, it's looking pretty sweet so far. Perhaps I might even make a bouquet. This time I'm going to try a little zigzag, see what happens. Use that little piece for something else. 
This time I'm going to try and keep them in a in a strip like that. You can tell I don't practice these things first, don't you? So I'm just going to roll it around and then maybe add in a few little tucks as I go to add a little bit of body to it. There, see? So that's both strips there now. And I think that looks even better than the last one. Certainly a different method anyway. It's been many years since I've made any silk paper, silk fusion, and I've really enjoyed doing this little project and making the flowers in the end from the silk paper that I made. I hope this has given you inspiration to try it for yourself. I've just added there a little part of a doily and then a bead and just to finish that off but you as I said you can stitch through those cocoons you can stick things on you can add all kinds of bling to it but let's have a look at our flowers aren't they lovely thanks again for watching if you have liked what you've seen don't forget to press like subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and Thanks again.